Clinton. ...that he attacks Bill Clinton for wanting to close them. Bill Clinton wants to collect what foreign corporations owe and put the money to work to rebuild America. Clinton Gore, for people, for a change. Watch, listen, and win. Find out how at 10. From ABC, this is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Good evening. We're going to begin tonight with two tantalizing questions. In presidential politics, with 11 days left in the campaign, has Governor Clinton run up such a lead in the polls that the president now needs a political miracle to get the electoral votes he needs to stay in office? We'll have the results of our state-by-state -state electoral poll in just a moment. We begin with another question that has bedeviled this nation through several presidents. Is it finally possible that there will be a real accounting from the Vietnamese of Americans still listed as missing in action? At the White House today, after he was briefed by a U.S. delegation just returned from Hanoi, President Bush seems convinced. Hanoi has agreed to provide us with all, and I repeat all, information they have collected on American POWs and MIAs. And today, finally, I am convinced that we can begin writing the last chapter uh, of the Vietnam War. Mr. Bush said that getting the Vietnamese to release the information to the United States was largely the work of one man. ABC's James Walker has the inside story of how it happened. As President Bush talked about the breakthrough with Vietnam, the man primarily responsible for it stood virtually unnoticed in the Rose Garden. Ted Schweitzer says he first went to Vietnam as a medical relief worker in 1989. While he was visiting the Army War Museum in Hanoi, the Vietnamese showed him the helmet of an American pilot. That wasn't all. Guns, uniforms, uh, ID cards, driver's licenses, money, notes, and uh, pictures of, of men who, who died in the crash of their airplanes or in battles in the South. I was flabbergasted. It was all there, and they, 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 they opened up these books of photographs, and I took pictures of them. Schweitzer came back to the U.S. hoping to write a book, but spent the next three years trying unsuccessfully to find a publisher. He then went to see an old friend at the State Department, Richard Armitage, who referred him to the Pentagon. Officials there were so interested, they hired him and sent him back to Hanoi last winter with high-tech equipment capable of scanning and storing thousands of images. The Vietnamese gave Schweitzer an office in the War Museum. Why? U.S. sources say some in the Vietnamese government wanted to use him as a conduit to quietly get the MIA information back to Washington in order to improve relations. They were ready to cooperate, and they brought me the materials, and I scanned them. The documents and photographs, um, I scanned them by the hundreds and by the thousands. Information from Schweitzer and another American agent have already resolved several cases, including that of Major Joseph Morrison, who had to bail out over North Vietnam in 1968. He was last heard on the radio trying to evade enemy soldiers on the ground. For 24 years, Morrison's son Jed and daughter Cindy had lived with uncertainty, not knowing whether their father was alive or dead. Then, last month, Pentagon officials brought them photographs taken by North Vietnamese. Photographs. Um, showing my dad laying in the jungle dead. They had unzipped his flight suit so you could see his name. And then they took close-up shots of his face also. You know, we know now um, for sure that he is dead. And that is, that is a relief. The photographs ease some of their worst fears. We feel that dad, um, because he's fully clothed in his flight suit, um, that he's not, um, he's not been tortured. It does not look like he's been tortured. We feel that dad was fighting the enemy and therefore they had to take him out. It, that's why we're proud. We're proud of dad and what he stood for and what he did for his country. Ted Schweitzer says there are thousands of documents, photographs and other evidence to be retrieved in Vietnam and not much time to do it. The documents that are in the hands of the government are deteriorating. It's hot there, it's humid, uh, there's no air conditioning. I, I think that we may have a couple of years in which we can still put this all together. Two years longer, perhaps, to try to produce answers for the families of some 2,200 U.S. servicemen still listed as missing in the Vietnam War. James Walker, ABC News, Washington. 
In a moment, we'll have that new poll in all the 50 states, which shows how much ground Mr. Bush must make up in order to win. We'll have a report on a scandal in France. The distributors of AIDS-contaminated blood get off with only light jail sentences. And on this Friday, our person of the week is a man taking note of innovation. Introducing a different air freshener, New Blade Nature's Collection. Give me fresh, give me clean, give me Nature's Collection. Blade's collection of nature's freshest fragrances in a spray and a carpet deodorizer. It's different, never heavy, always light to freshen any room. So fresh, so light, give me fruit, give me green, give me Nature's Collection. New Blade Nature's Collection from S.C. Johnson Wax. Nature's Collection. When your sinus and nasal congestion feels this bad, what can you do? Last year, you wanted to call the doctor. Last year, you wanted a prescription. But this year, Tavis D in its full prescription strength is available without a prescription. Just one tablet helps relieve 12 hours worth of painful congestion and sneezing. Guess what? I'll be there after all. Tavis D. One tablet, 12 hours, and now no prescription. We begin our presidential politics tonight by trying to resolve some of the confusion created in all of our minds by so many different polls on who is doing how well with only 11 days to go. Most of the poll results you hear are basically the national popularity contest. But as we have said earlier this week, the election is fought on a state-by-state -state basis for electoral votes. And so we have just completed a survey of more than 11,000 likely voters in 50 states plus the District of Columbia. It measures more realistically the effect of public opinion today. And it certainly makes clear what the challenge is for President Bush. 270 electoral votes are needed to win the presidency. Based on our survey, Governor Clinton is clearly ahead in 18 states, which have a total of 261 electoral votes. That is just nine votes short of what would be needed to be elected. And he could conceivably get those other nine from eight other states which have 47 electoral votes between him in which he is leading. Now this is what President Bush faces. He is clearly ahead in no states. And he is leading in only three states with 18 electoral votes. Our polling unit lists 32 states with 212 electoral votes as toss up. Ross Perot is not leading in any state. And so this is how it looks overall today. President Bush is in red, leading in three states with 18 electoral votes. Governor Clinton in blue, clearly ahead or leading in 25 states, plus the District of Columbia, which adds up to 300 elect 308 electoral votes. 22 states, you can see there in yellow, are a toss-up. And it is ironic that these numbers come at the end of a week that many people, both in and out of the Bush campaign, judge one of the president's best. Here's ABC's Britt Hume. As he scrambles from one stop to the next in states a Republican should be able to count on but can't this year, the president refuses to let down, refuses to acknowledge electoral odds that show in his own polls as well as others. Don't let these sorry pollsters tell you what to think. It's going fine. I'm convinced we're going to win it. On the platform, some Republicans running this year shun him leaving the job of introducing him to those not up for election. Today in Kentucky, it was Senator Mitch McConnell, whose term still has four years to run. The man who's coming from behind to win, President George Bush. Mr. Bush is drawing large and enthusiastic crowds at well-organized rallies that have the polish of a winning effort. That has seemed to lift his spirits all week. I have never seen such a wonderful rally, and it's great for the morale. And the crowds love it when the president, like many an underdog in the late hours of a campaign before him, blasts the news media for its coverage of the race. Here's my favorite bumper sticker of all. Annoy the media, re-elect Bush. It is mostly good-natured, and he's remarkably energetic for a man of 68. At times, however, fatigue from his grueling schedule shows through in his speech, as it did yesterday in New Jersey. I want to run the risk of ruining what is a lovely recession, a lovely reception by... by... <laughs> Wait till you hear this, you'll know what I'm talking about. He must be glad to get home at the end of these long days, but he'll be out there again every day and night until the end. It may look grim, but he's been counted out before, ended up here in the White House anyway. Rich Hume, ABC News, Washington. 
While President Bush has been trying to shore up his Republican base this week, Governor Clinton was trying to take it away from him. Today, in such normally Republican states as Nevada and Missouri, as ABC's Chris Bury reports, Governor Clinton thinks he has some reason to be pleased. We want Bill! Wherever he went this week, Bill Clinton drew the biggest crowds of his campaign. Nearly 30,000 in Chicago, more than 20,000 in heavily Republican Orange County, California, 10,000 in Seattle. Election year crowds always get bigger in October, but veteran political reporters see a difference this year. For people who are not incumbents, I don't think I've seen anything like the Clinton crowd since 1960. For Clinton, the crowds are like a tonic. He can't seem to get enough of them, and they can't get enough of him. Many come not just to listen, but to touch. Part of it is celebrity. Part of it is animal magnetism. And part of it is the hope of being on the winning team. Why did you come here personally? Because I want to see the next president of the United States. I've never seen one up close. <laughs> My kids said, Mother, are you crazy? You're going to have to get up about 5 and take a bus about 6. And I said, I'm going. That's all I know is I'm going. It is Clinton's core message, time for a new generation of leaders that most often hits the hot button. And I will lead the wave of change that will lift this country up and forward into the future. Thank you and God bless you all. The Clinton crowds may be big and boisterous, but they hardly materialize by magic. A typical Clinton rally is as carefully choreographed and as heavily hyped as a Broadway musical. Chicago, Bill Clinton and Al Gore are coming tomorrow at noon to Daly Plaza. Days before Clinton's visit to Chicago this week, his campaign bought radio ads to plug it. Staffers hit the streets to drum up a lunch hour crowd. Do I an invitation to a rally tomorrow? Yeah, Governor Clinton and Senator Gore will both be here tomorrow at noon. But his campaign's organizational skill alone cannot explain the intensity. If a candidate's prospects can be gauged by the size and mood of his crowds, then Clinton has good reason to be confident. Chris Bury, ABC News, Seattle. And a word about Ross Perot, something different from Mr. Perot. For the first time since he re-entered the race, he's going to appear at public rallies this weekend in New Jersey and in Pennsylvania. When we come back, outrage in France and charges of injustice in the midst of a scandal involving AIDS-contaminated blood. Every presidential election in the 20th century has had enormous implications for America and the world. Through it all, Merrill Lynch has understood those implications. And we continue to use that understanding to help you shape your future as we move forward together. It's gone. But it isn't. Here's strong medicine in a cough drop. Extra Strength Vicks, with Vicks Vapor Medicine so effective, it'll relieve your cough and help your scratchy throat and stuffy nose feel better, even after the drop is gone. Who needs a pot of coffee before work? Try Folgers Coffee Singles, made with ground roast coffee and its own filter for one freshly brewed cup. Folgers Coffee Singles, the ultimate one-cup coffee machine. I'd let you drive the Camry, but you know nothing about it. Multi-valve engine, high tensile steel construction, available ABS, driver's side airbag is standard. You know nothing about... Ergonomics, panoramic cockpit, contoured seats, room for five. You don't have your glasses. Contacts. You're left-handed. Uh-huh. The 1993 Toyota Camry. Few cars actually move you. This is one. In France today, the trial of mass poisoning, as some newspapers have called it, is finally over. In 1985, thousands of people in France received transfusions with blood products tainted by the AIDS virus. Senior health officials knew the blood was contaminated, but they allowed it to be used anyway. They were put on trial, and here's ABC's Jim Bitterman on the verdicts. At the Palace of Justice, no one believed justice had been done. Victims and their supporters were angry that despite clear evidence that thousands became HIV positive from contaminated blood and blood products, only two people were given jail sentences, and the most severe penalty was just four years. That went to Michelle Garetta, former head of the National Blood Transfusion Center, who wasn't even present for the sentencing. He was found guilty of distributing a clotting agent used by hemophiliacs 
that he knew was tainted with the AIDS virus. It was that blood concentrate which led to the death of 11-year-old Laurent Godin from AIDS and made his brother Stefan HIV positive. Outside the court, their parents were outraged the sentences weren't more severe. Said Mrs. Godin, you kill one person and you get 20 years. You kill thousands and the sentence is four years. It's a joke. Her 15-year-old son, now sick with AIDS, was too emotional to speak. The prosecution proved that Goretta kept on distributing contaminated blood products because a recall would have cost about a half million dollars. What's more, evidence at the trial showed that at the same time, the government allowed the general blood supply to become tainted with HIV. For months, officials blocked imports of an American-made blood screening test out of fear it would prove too much competition for one being developed by French researchers. Because of the delay, thousands of people are thought to have been infected by blood transfusions. Some may not even know today that they are HIV positive. That group, in addition to the 1,500 hemophiliacs who were infected with HIV, have made the contaminated blood affair the worst medical scandal in French history. Jim Bitterman, ABC News, Paris. There was criticism today of U.S. government health policy. Medical researchers say that foot dragging by the U.S. government on requiring warning labels for aspirin to help the needless, or rather warning aspirins for aspirin, has led to the needless deaths of nearly 1,500 children from Rye syndrome. The labels warn parents not to use aspirin uh, to treat their child's chicken pox or flu. The warnings were recommended when Rye syndrome was linked uh, to aspirin in 1981, but they were not required until 1986. On Wall Street today, the Dow Jones Industrials gained more than six points to close at 3207, and the trading was heavy. That brought the gain for the week to more than 33 points. There were further reports and rumors out of General Motors today. The company announced it will consolidate some of its manufacturing operations in a further effort to save money. And there are stories in the press again predicting that GM Chairman Robert Stemple will soon be out of a job. There has been a lot of talk lately about trouble in the banking industry. Today, more than a thousand banks uh, were the rumor they may be on the verge of going under, er, under, and that led to senior government bank regulators to hold a rare news conference to say it is not true. They actually say a hundred or so banks may fail next year, but that there is enough insurance to cover the losses and it will not cost the taxpayers a penny. In a moment, chilling new pictures of torture in Bosnia. Can a razor cut your beard below the skin? Without the blades touching your face? It can if it's a Norelco. Because inside the floating heads, our lift and cut system lifts the hair so when it's cut, it can drop below skin level without the blades touching your face. Are you shaving this incredibly close and comfortable? You are when you shave with Norelco. Norelco, we make close comfortable. new waterproof formula bathroom duck the only multi-surface bathroom cleaner that waterproofs as it cleans to resist dirt buildup like water up a duck's back watch how dirty water just slides off the side cleaned with bathroom duck its unique waterproofing formula resists dirt buildup to make cleaning easier new bathroom duck nothing fights bathroom dirt like duck from sc johnson wax know where i am I'm at one of the finest resorts in the world. I love it because everything is right here. I can relax in the sun, eat marvelous food, enjoy a room with an ocean view. There's fabulous entertainment, friendly service, and it's all included in the price. But what makes this resort really fun is that it takes me to some of the world's other great vacation spots. Take a three, four, or seven day fun ship vacation on Carnival, the most popular cruise line in the world. I dreaded this visit to the doctor. I had, um, I had stomach problems. You know, more chalky medicine to take. I mean, just getting it down is... <laughs> but what my doctor told me about really blew my mind. New Mylanta Gel Caps. Introducing the antacid with absolutely no chalky taste. New Mylanta Gel Caps. Potent antacid relief now in an easy-to-swallow gel cap. New Mylanta Gel Caps. My doctor said Mylanta. The human rights group Amnesty International has published a new report on atrocities in Bosnia-Herzegovina. More evidence that Serbian forces have committed most of the atrocities and that the victims are, for the most part, 
Bosnian Muslims. Here's ABC's Barry Dunsmore. Amnesty International provided the news media with eyewitness accounts and pictures, some too gruesome to broadcast. This is the site near Sarajevo where a bus was ambushed and its Muslim passengers killed. An Amnesty International pathologist who examined the pictures determined that at least eight of the victims died as the result of gunshot wounds to the head at close range. A 15-year-old Muslim girl tells of how her father was shot in a massacre of more than 83 men, women and children in a village in eastern Bosnia on May 16th. I thought my father was wounded. I went up to him and lifted him by the arm, but he lay dead with his face blown off. A Serbian woman married to a Muslim describes the killing of her husband and two sons in the town of Zvornik in April. They strangled my eldest son with a wire. I saw it all. The Amnesty International pictures show a man who has just had his throat cut receiving medical treatment. He survived. And we see a group of Muslim detainees just released from a detention camp displaying injuries consistent with torture. Yesterday, the United States released its latest report on atrocities in Bosnia. Next week, the UN Human Rights Commission will submit its findings. All such material is to go to the new UN War Crimes Commission. Barry Dunsmore, ABC News, the State Department. Still overseas from China today, a threat about Hong Kong. The Chinese government had promised not to interfere in Hong Kong's political affairs after Britain hands over the territory five years from now. Today, China said it may break that promise. China is upset that Britain recently instituted free elections in Hong Kong, despite China's objections. We'll be back in just a moment. World News Tonight with Peter Jennings and the Person of the Week are brought to you by Dimatap. When I get a cold, I see a doctor. I'm married to one. My wife recommends Dimatap Extend Tabs. Doctors have recommended the Dimatap brand over 200 million times. Adult Strength Extend Tabs relieve your cold symptoms for 12 hours with one of the least sedating non-prescription antihistamines. My wife is a doctor, so I can really trust what she tells me. Doctors recommend Dimatap for their families and yours. For four-hour cold relief, try new Dimatap Liquid Gels. Lots of credit cards will give you a cash advance, but there could be a cat. Interest charges. Some credit cards charge them from day one, which is why you should use the Discover card. Pay your full monthly balance and a small transaction fee, and we'll give you a cash advance interest-free. How does that grab you? It pays to Discover. Why are these people smiling? They've got Polydim for partials, with the power to clean the pearly part and the metal part in just five minutes. So get Polydim for partials, because, hey, it's good looking on almost everybody. Nighttime, one of the worst times for pain. Minor arthritis pain, muscle aches, pain that seems to go on. That's why you need Ultra Strength Bengay with more pain relievers than we've ever had. You can say goodnight to your pain with Ultra Strength Bengay. What happens in a town where one out of seven women is a lesbian? You wonder why I would be attracted to men. Correct. Are they really that different? Don't make up your mind about women who love women until you see 2020 tonight. Finally this evening, our person of the week. It was his birthday this week that made us realize we had never focused on him before, which we're sure you will agree was a mistake. For this is a man, and he turned 75 this week, who has been making a difference since he was in his 20s. Playing the trumpet, you, you have forceful, like you say, pow, like that, and you have someone say, poo, you know, like that. So sometimes, if you fooling around, you know, warming up, you know, and you were saying, poo, poo, it detects that. And then when you get ready to push, you have to fight it. Dizzy Gillespie and his horn have been together in concert for more than 60 years now. He is one of modern music's great innovators, and he has never taken a trumpet lesson. I think trumpet is one of the most difficult of instruments. It only has three valves to make a million different notes. 
John Burke Gillespie has made millions of notes since his childhood in Chiraw, South Carolina. His parents, James and Lottie Gillespie, raised nine children on a bricklayer's salary. His father played the bass fiddle as a hobby. My father never saw me play, because he died when I was nine and a half. Gillespie began tinkering with a friend's trumpet when he was 14. The music came out of the gospel, the blues. When he was 20 in 1937, Gillespie moved to New York and began jamming with some of the big bands here, most notably the Cab Calloway Band. It was because of his absent-mindedness that some of his musician friends began calling him dizzy. I don't remember doing nothing, <laughs> to tell you the truth. What he does remember is teaching himself to play like Louis Armstrong. A lot of run-of-the-mill musicians tried it at the time, but they noticed Gillespie. A great innovator comes on the scene, and he creates a style of music. And then all of the other musicians jump behind him. By the mid-1940s, Gillespie, who was running his own band and creating new rhythms and new harmonies, was one of the people that others would jump behind. What he was doing was called bebop. Why was it called bebop? The accents actually say bebop. One music critic then called it a bunch of wrong notes, but the audiences loved it then and love it now. And Gillespie himself kept growing musically, composing music for which he learned to play the piano, singing. Gee, baby, ain't I good to you? He even took up dancing. And the answer to those cheeks? It's like somebody blow into a balloon. Most likely it's because Gillespie never really learned the proper way to blow from the diaphragm. I don't know what happened to my face. My face just went that way, and that's it. But it doesn't hurt. And so he became one of the leaders in the jazz age, one of the men who moved jazz out of the jazz joints and onto the concert stage. Or as Gillespie would put it, me and my partner. So I just lays there nonchalantly. And the moment I, someone puts some uh, air into it, it wakes up. And it wakes up violence. And it, it, uh, so it plays for you if, you, if you're lucky. He's lucky. So we choose Dizzy Gillespie. He hasn't been well this week and he's had to miss some of the festivities to celebrate his birthday but he doesn't miss much it's the music which keeps me alive he says long may he play that's our report on world news tonight i'm peter jennings have a good weekend we'll see you monday 2020 later good night this has been a presentation of abc news more americans get their news from abc news than from any other source Saturday, a high-class madam names Tony as a client. Is it true you have a preference for red garter belts? The career you say could be your own. I can't let her blackmail me into dropping the case. This thing could blow up in your face. But her murder makes him a suspect. You've lost the public's trust. I'm innocent! The Commission, Saturday. Read my lips. Jefferson Auto Plaza going to bring you and your new car together. We don't make promises like the politicians. We sell for less. We're a small-town dealer with low overhead and great prices. For example, we've got this 1992 Escort LX for only $163 a month, or this 1992 Temple for only $178 a month. Bring your title and checkbook to the Jefferson Auto Plaza located next to the Redwood Motel on Highway 30, or give us a call at 515-386-8175. If she were sick, you wouldn't wait to see the doctor. So why wait to fix the brakes on the car you drive around?